you guys clicked on this video with the hope of learning how to make a million dollars off an acre property, then I'm sorry, you're gonna be sorely disappointed and I'd advise clicking away now. The aquaponic world is littered with a lot of failed farms. People that are throwing masses of money at the latest fad and they have lost a lot of money in the process. So I thought I might make this video to try and dispel a few myths and to give you guys an idea about the actual realities of it. But first we need to define what the actual term of aquaponics that I'm gonna use in these videos are. Because there is a lot of debate on what you could actually mean by commercial aquaponics. So in this video, I'm not gonna put in the people that just have a little backyard system and are trying to sell some herbs on the side of the road. I'm gonna think about the people that actually wanna make a living out of it. People that wanna throw a stack of money at it and make it their full-time job. If you're a regular on forums or places like Reddit, then you'll see a lot of these sort of posts popping up. People, they see, the, they see aquaponics and they think, yes, it's time to make some money. We need to make this awesome and it's gonna work because aquaponics is magic, but it's really not. Now, it costs a lot more to do than regular dirt gardening. With, against hydroponics, it's far more restrictive in things like, for, in things like pesticides and stuff they can use on it. And if you don't know what you're doing, you are going to crash and burn in a commercial scale. But for commercial aquaponics, the first thing that we need to learn is economy of scales, which basically means the more you have of something, the cheaper it is, because you can spread the costs out over more of something that you sell. And it plays a massive part in any sort of farming, not just aquaponic or hydroponic, dirt farming and those sort of things have a massive dependence on economy of scale. So let's play a little game. On my right, I'm gonna have a farm set up that's gonna be a thousand square meters. And on my left, there's gonna be a farm here that is a thousand square meters. There is a massive different size of these two, but they'll show you the difference in economy of scales and how they affect to it. And a pump, obviously you need. A generator, because you do need some sort of backup, because if you don't have a jet backup system on a commercial property, then you are a moron. Greenhouse and a monitoring system, because you are gonna need a monitoring system to keep track of everything and how it all works. Now, these are just a few things, but they're showing great detail why it's a hell of a lot harder to make a profit off aquaponics in the smaller scale. On the larger scale, you can potentially produce 10 times more products, 10 times more fish, 10 times more fruit and veg, whatever you're trying to sell. But the startup costs are a lot higher in comparison to the amount that you can sell on the 1,000 meter squared farm. And the guys that have got enough funds to start up a 1,000 meter square farm are gonna try to find it a lot harder to try and pay off the loans, to pay back the people they borrowed the money off, or even to make the money back themselves on a far smaller farm because you can't sell as much basically. But let's have a look at a farmer that I've been watching for a while. Somebody that I've been watching on YouTube for quite some time and is a really interesting case study. I've got his channel here, it is Citizen Peng. I would really recommend going through and have a look through his videos. He's got an incredible system. If you go through and have a look through it, it's called, he's called it his retirement fund and he is an incredibly hard worker. Look at some of the stuff that he's done and stuff that he's dug out by hand, the stuff that he's built. And that is probably the best case scenario for somebody that's trying to do a small scale farm because he's done it all himself. The greenhouse was built mostly from scrap. He built pretty much everything himself and it is quite incredible to watch. He's also got a dedicated group of people that are coming and buying the product for him because He's growing stuff that you can't normally buy in the shops, so he has a very dedicated market, which is one of the best possible scenarios for a small-scale farm. But unless I'm wrong, he is seriously struggling to keep it all afloat. If you have a look at some of his latest videos, they are still quite good, but he's trying to expand the farm and he is asking for crowdfunding and those sort of things, which I've got nothing against at all. If he's trying to make it work, trying to work on his subscriber base to try and help it all go through, no problems at all with that. But I have a feeling he is seriously struggling to make ends meet. He's had videos that came out a while ago that went through how he's still seriously struggling and about to shut the doors. And I really do honestly wish him the best and I hope to see more out of him. But given the fact that we haven't seen anything from him in about two, three months, does not bode well. I think it's all gone pear-shaped and he's pretty much gone under. But I'm very happy to be proved wrong. If he pops up a video that says it's all working, then I will be very happy and I like his channel, but I haven't seen much for a while and I have a feeling that's why. Now, all these things aside, let's say you've ponied up the money. You've found it from somewhere, you've gotten loans, you've got rich parents, or you've saved it up for a very long time. And you've got enough for the 10,000 square meter farm. Awesome. But it's still not easy street. You have got a lot of competition. There are masses of big farms out there that are funded by people that, funded by supermarkets, funded by all those sort of things, which are extremely hard to compete with. And it is completely useless growing thousands of tons of fantastic produce if he just can't sell it. 
So you'll find one of the biggest things that a lot of farmers do is have to market. So you have to become a full-time marketer or pay somebody to be a full-time marketer to try and sell your product, which is not an easy task at all. Because you've got farms that can produce this stuff in massive, massive quantities. And they will get very long deals with supermarkets where they can pay pretty much nothing to get a lot of products, product. But since they can produce a lot of it, then that's how they make ends meet. And I have seen on the forums, people come on and say, yes, we're gonna go to farmer's market. We're gonna write organic over the top of it and we're gonna sell a lot of product. But it's really not that simple. You have, if you go to a local farmer's market, at least here in Adelaide, Australia, then you'll find that people don't wanna spend that much money on product. You've got sellers on the side of the things and you've got people that are hocking as cheap as possible as what they can. You might have the best product there, but if people don't wanna buy it, then you are going to lose a lot of money again. Okay, so let's say you are fantastic at marketing. You're the next Steve Jobs. You can sell absolutely everything. Well, awesome, and now you're gonna to have to learn about aquaponics, because it's very different than having an own backyard system. I have a backyard system out there, and I think it's fantastic. If I tried to scale that up into a commercial system, then it would all crash and burn. It might work, but you would not get the optimum growth out of everything, because backyard aquaponics is a compromise. It's a compromise of everything that we do. If I'm trying to grow something like tomatoes and lettuce in the same system, then it is a very different thing. Because tomatoes, you want to have low nitrates and you want to have lots of potassium sort of things to encourage lots of flowering and encourage more fruit. If you've got something like lettuce, then you need to have the complete opposite. High nitrates and very low in potassium and things that encourage flowering. Because if you've got them both in the same system, then you won't have ideal. And if you grow commercially, then you need to produce the maximum amount that you can to get the most money out of it. And there is far more information that I simply can't teach you because I don't know. And there's far more information that I can't teach you because I simply don't know. But that's where one of the problems comes in. I'm happy to have tomatoes and lettuce in the same water to have circulate the same through and to have a combination of both, which helps them both grow to this point that I'm happy. But commercial is far different. If you type commercial aquaponics into Google, then you will come up with a good page of options but there are not many on there that I would actually trust. And I'm not gonna name names because I have a feeling that I would probably get sued by some of these that don't like their name being turned down, but there are not a lot of good options out there. And the ones that you are, I think come down to about four tiers. The first is, first I'd like to say is the open scam artist. The people that go around on the internet, scour the internet for five minutes and then try and pull information into one big group and try and sell it like that. And then they try and charge a lot of money for information like that. And they could have a very pretty website, it could look quite professional, but you really don't know until you actually spent the money and download their information that it's not good. And somebody starting out, you probably don't know the difference between a good commercial system or a bad one. And they also have a habit of offering the world. They claim that you'll get a million dollars out of one acre, which if that was possible, I would sell my house and I would go buy an acre and do that because it's real world, that sort of stuff does not happen. The second tier, I would say, is the semi-legit people. People that have got their own little backyard system or even a large backyard system and think they know what they're doing. So they try and scale up their backyard system into something that they think is awesome and works quite well and they're quite passionate about it and they think they know what they're talking about. But as I said before, scaling up a backyard system is very different than having a commercial system and there are lots of reasons why. And the first of that would probably be the tomato and lettuce scenario that I turned about it would be cleaning the beds. Can you get enough control over the nitrites and nitrates? Can you get enough control over everything? Can you pump enough water? What flows of water do you need to have going through the fish tank? What flows of water do you need to have going through the DWC? Or which one's better? There are a lot of different stuff that you need to take into account. And unless you've actually gone out there and done it, then it is quite a tricky thing to know what you're doing. And people that have done backyard systems and try and scale it up, they just do not seem to work. If you have a look online, there are a lot of failed farms that have tried to do this. People that have gone through, I saw somebody on Kickstarter that was trying to sell information from their failed farm, which was quite a scary thing. Because they thought, oh yes, we failed, so we know, what, we know what other people shouldn't do. And I wouldn't trust those sort of people with my money. The third one I'd like to say is the legit people, the people that are out there and doing it. And that is the ones that I would actually trust. But again, you need to know what you're looking at, which is quite tricky. You need to make sure that they have an actual working farm and they're not just surviving by doing courses and doing training and doing tours and that sort of things. Because you just can't trust somebody that, 
I mean, they might be very good, might look very pretty, but unless they can actually produce sums of money and make it all work by themselves, then you really shouldn't trust them. And one that I would actually recommend if you guys want to go out and have a look is Ryan Chatterson. He worked in the industry. He's got degrees, he's got all those sort of things, and he knows very well what he's doing. I'll pop a link down at the bottom if you guys want to get more information, and he's got an online course, which I haven't had a look at, so I can't verify, but he's done courses on his farm, and it's just incredible to look at some of the stuff that he's come up with, and he would be one of the ones I would trust. There are some other ones out there, but make sure you look through them and know what they're talking about, and they know what they're talking about. Now, I hope this gives you guys an idea about what's actually involved in an aquaponic farm. And if you're still involved, if you're still really keen to do it, you've got the capital, you've got the marketing skills, you've got the plan, you've got everything, then I seriously do wish you the best of luck. And let me know how it goes, because I am always curious and keen to see these sort of farms come together, because it is quite something that's amazing to see. Now, I hope you guys got something out of this, and if you've got any questions, comments, or just want to yell at me because you're not quite happy with how I presented this, or that sort of stuff, then please let me know. Comment down wherever you found this, on Reddit, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you found this video, then give me a comment and I'll do my best to reply and come back with what I know. But I'm not an expert, I haven't done this professionally, and I haven't set up my own commercial aquaponic farm. But this is the best of what I've actually been able to tell, and from people that are trying to do it themselves. So. I hope you guys got something out of this and make sure to subscribe to see me do other stuff. I've got other stuff on my channel if you guys are interested, more aquaponic, basically backyard sort of stuff. But I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. So thanks guys.